Good afternoon, my name is Mick Napier from Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign and we have these uh, recently irregular but we hope to become more regular Sunday afternoon live broadcasts with individuals that we think have something very significant to add to the discourse over Palestine solidarity. Um, we've had a galaxy of great talent over the last year and I'm delighted that uh, we had Jackie Walker here in the flesh in Scotland a couple of times over the last year, but I'm very glad she's able to join us, I imagine, from London. Welcome, Jackie. Hi. Right, Jackie, you're a notorious racist. Can you tell us how you managed to get this, uh, this uh, identity? Yeah, it was easy. I was a supporter of the Palestinians and an anti-racist and more importantly, a supporter of Jeremy Corbyn. And I don't know if you've noticed, if you're those three things, then you will be called a notorious racist. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. The only thing I bring to the party, the main guest is Jackie. We'll be talking about Jackie too, Jackie. That I bring to the party that I was dragged through a courtroom 22 times for nearly two years with four other comrades for actually saying the words end the siege of Gaza for racism and a second time for three years for condemning the Israeli massacre of Protective Edge in 2014. A banner we produced with a blood symbol on it and the bodies were barely cold in Gaza. The prosecutor said actually referred to a medieval blood libel against Jews that they kidnapped Christian children and use their blood to bake matzos during festivals. That was in a glass courtroom in the current century. But Jackie, you've been dragged through the through uh, through the mud. Um, you've been expelled from the Labour Party. How did it all begin? How did these things happen? It's getting a bit crazy, isn't it? Oh, I mean, I think when it began with me, which is actually now about three years ago. So I was one of the first, not quite the first. I think the first was really Naz Shah, but I was one of the first uh, that this happened to. And I think people didn't know what was going on. They didn't understand what was going on. But now you see that there is a particular pattern of what happens. So the first thing they do, I think, is that they identify key people. And they'll be key people because, oh, I don't know, because they are influential within Corbyn supporting groups or Palestinian groups, or they may just get into some kind of role with some power and influence. And then what they do is that they dig and they dig through everything. And we've just seen that now with that MP, that nonsense story of an MP two years ago, supposedly singing some racist song in a coach and it's only just emerged now. So, I mean, basically that's what happened to me. This organization called um, well, they're called benignly the Israel Advocacy Movement. They're not an advocacy movement. They're a propaganda unit, um, really, for um, Zionism and for Israel. And they dug up and took out of context um, a discussion that I had been having with a Zionist friend and a couple of other friends, which was referring to my ancestors. Not Jews in general, but my ancestors. And then that's all they need, because once they have anything, then the media will just run with it. And these people, they have masses of, 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 um, of people on Twitter, on, on social media, who act as an... But, but Jackie, what is, is, is a key part of it not to say um, you have been accused by somebody, however bizarrely, of anti-Semitism, Yes. Then the next stage is she has been accused by lots of people of anti-Semitism. Yes. And so, then what she said it led her to be suspended for anti-Semitism. Yes. And what she said and what she said. And so, we never find out what you said. No, so this is really important because that first, the first thing that I was accused of, which was the Facebook post, I was actually exonerated within four weeks from that. But that doesn't matter because then it's just repeated and repeated. Yeah. The second time, it went on for two years. And it went on for two years because it suited them for it to go on for two years. I was gagging for it to be finished, by the way. But by that time, what happens is that you become labelled as an anti-Semite 
And if you're like me, and like most people, you actually don't have the money. You don't have the money to defend yourself in court. And so people can then libel, they can defame you till the heart's content, and it becomes an established fact. In fact, even the lynching court of the Labour Party didn't find that I was guilty of anti-Semitism, and for good reason. But it, how, how can I, what can I put, say here? When, during all this time, um, you were supposed to be suspended uh, pending an investigation. <laughs> now, was this an investigation or was this simply dragging things out? No investigation. It was a, is the word, you've called it a lynching. Other people have said a witch hunt. Defend the use of that word, please, because um, well, okay. Donald Trump used the word lynching because people were, were not nice to him. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, the difference is, I don't think any of his ancestors would have risked a lynching, whereas a number of mine would. Cause, so I think it's an obscenity for him to use it. Whereas I think for a black person to use it, I think it's a, a, a totally different thing. How a witch hunt works is, is to avoid evidence. It does, in fact, not just that it doesn't need evidence. If you ask people to provide evidence, they become irate and they then accuse you yet again. So they double down on the accusation. So the, the point is both with me and with almost all of the high profile people I can think of or all of them, there is no evidence. There is no evidence. But what it comes down to and this is what it comes down to in the Labour Party, is that you're on the wrong side of a political argument and the Labour Party leadership at the moment is totally compromising and complicit with what's going on. So they're suspending and expelling some black people and some Jewish comrades uh, for racism. Yes. Um, you couldn't make it up, could you? Yeah disproportionately i have to tell you yeah. as far as i can see i mean we, we don't have records so this is just people who get in touch with me there's no doubt in my mind that disproportionately jewish people and people of color are being suspended and expelled but you proved your guilt didn't you by protesting against the accusation and if you protest against the accusation it proves that you don't get it if you, disagree that, if you disagree that the Labour Party is a sewer of anti-Semitism, this means you don't get it, you're part of the problem, uh, you have to be dealt with. You know, it's like a duck, ducking stool. That's how they used to prove you were a witch. If you floated, you were a witch and they'd hang you. And if you didn't float, you'd drown and you were dead. That is the point. There is no getting out of this. There is no way that you can actually, in fact, I wish I could, I wish I could take this to court because what I know is that in court, this would be laughed at. It would be laughed at. Well, that's, that's the advantage I had over you, Jackie, me and other folk, because we went to a courtroom and it cost a couple of grand, but it was, <laughs> most of it came from legal aid, luckily. Um, and it just took a lot of time and energy. But we were able to cross-examine, destroy, demolish, and even um, sheriffs and judges in uh, British courts, Scottish courts, ridiculed the charges and threw them out. Yes. But you didn't have the luxury of, a, of even a notionally level playing field. I guess these guys were just there to hang you. Yeah? yeah, I mean, what you've got to remember, and this is shown in what happened with Chris Williamson, the Labour Party as a legal entity is a club. And as a club, it can basically make up the rules as it goes along. So here you have the contradiction of a party which sets itself up as a party which champions fairness and equality, but has rules which, if it was in an employment court, it, they would refuse to accept. So there I am being judged by three people, two of whom are union officials who would not have agreed to the rules they were judging me by in, in, in an employment tribunal. Yeah, of course not. That is the level of corruption we're talking about. Yeah. Now look, I can only think of two cases here in Scotland, a really fine woman, a, a Labour Party member in uh, Fife, a councillor, 
uh, she came under uh, a cloud for anti-Semitism. I can't even remember. I can't even remember what the accusation was. It was preposterous. Um, but I remember she posted a few times during that that she really felt gutted. You know, she felt terrible. She felt not good. Um, I guess she had a loyalty to the Labour Party that I cast off when I was 17. But when people you're loyal to turn around on you, then I guess it must be horrible. Eh? Oh, it's the worst thing. You know, I, you can fight your enemies. But yeah. when people who are supposed to be your comrades, you know, you can disagree with your comrades. But this is past disagreement, what is happening. And can I just say, what you've got to remember is particular, in particular, if you're Jewish and if you're black, the accusation of racism, when you yourself and your ancestors have been the victims of the most awful, awful, murderous racism, is an abuse. Mm -hmm. And the Labour Party has become part of the machinery of abuse, as far as I'm concerned, where this is, uh, relates to. No, that's a really good point, Jackie. I don't often think about that because I'm white. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, public drinking sessions in the USA to lynch black people, public celebrations, big mass crowds enjoying themselves, it's, uh, it's beyond disgusting. Yeah. And then these people have dragged you over the dirt um, yes. as a racist. So you've got three strikes against you in this racist society. One, you're black, two, you're Jewish, and three, you're a racist. They do yes. pile on, don't they? Yeah, and I mean, just recently, I was reading a letter from a, um, a rabbi from a reformed synagogue. I won't mention the name of it yet, um, because I've written to him, who actually has written to his his, I don't know, congregation, he's written to his congregation, naming me and actually lying about me. Now what that, what that evokes is a hate campaign, which means I have to walk out on that street. And I don't know if you've heard about this, but a Labour councillor last week was actually attacked. And when that person attacked him, when he was canvassing, he screamed at him, you're an anti-Semite. Now, what I'm aware of is that there are people out there, and we know them, we know who some of them are, who are violent racists, and they have taken on the mantle of the Israeli flag and of Zionism to ply their racist violence. And the fact that I am now a target for that and the Labour Party has helped me to become that, I think is just despicable. What's to say? It's beyond despicable. But let's think about the people who are accusing you and the kind of worldview that some of them have. Mm -hmm. What's this about you not having any Jewish blood or something oh, about blood? Goodness, I mean, for God's goodness. sake, you know, and this is dirty talk, but the audience will, the viewers will listen while you tell us what happened and who said it. Can I, can I just say on this that the thought of somebody talking about Jewish blood or African blood, I mean, it's so resonant, isn't it, of the worst racist regimes, whether you're talking about apartheid South Africa or apartheid or, or Nazi um, Germany, or now, in fact, apartheid Israel, where they all judge people on what their blood is. Jackie, can well, I interrupt you very briefly, because we really want to hear what you have to say about this. But Glasgow Friends of Israel, we've got the Facebook shots, and yes. screenshots and so on. They actually had a conversation about uh, a clash in, in Jerusalem a year or two ago, where a few people were killed. Mm -hmm. And they said um, two Jews were killed, and I think two Palestinians were euthanized. <gasps> um, that's what they discussed on their Facebook page. Also on their Facebook page, they discussed the massacre in the mosque in, uh, in New Zealand as Muslims getting what they deserved. Uh, comeback for all the things that Muslims had done around the world, those worshippers who were massacred. So I think when you just peel a little bit at the worldview of the people who are accusing you, it's pretty dark and vile. Did you? Sorry it, I interrupted you, but I thought no, it might... No, no, it is useful. pretty horrible. Now, the interesting thing is um, the amount of Jews who went to the um, gas chambers 
who were genetically less Jewish than me. Who knows how many there were? Who knows how many? But I would wonder if those people would actually say, well, actually, they weren't Jews. They weren't Jews, right? My father was an Ashkenazi Jew, and my mother was a Caribbean woman of Jewish descent. Now, I've actually, not because of this, I've had my DNA done, just because I was fascinated, because I'm such an extraordinary... Hey, I, got, I got mine done 15 years ago. Apparently, I'm an Afghan, but do continue, yeah? <laughs> Well, apparently, I am something like 42% African, which actually quite surprised me. And I am 53% uh, um, Jewish. 51% um, Ashkenazi, and the rest is Sephardi. So, you know, I think I'm certainly genetically Jewish, if there is such a thing as that. And in terms of, you know, the way that um, they all, if you say that, then they always say, oh, yeah, but you can't be Jewish unless you're brought up to be Jewish. What the hell does that mean, how you're brought up to be Jewish? Are you telling me that to be Jewish as opposed to anything else. You have to go to synagogue. You cannot be a humanist and be Jewish. I mean, get real. Of course I don't go to synagogue. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in any God. I'm a damn socialist. Why would I go to any synagogue? I'm sorry, nobody told us before you were invited on that you didn't believe in her. Um, so um, we never screened you out for that. Sorry about that, viewers. Um, Jackie, do continue because, uh, first of all, for me, I think a Jew is an individual who identifies as Jewish. Um, I may be, <laughs> I can't tell you when I was a kid if I was 51% Catholic, um, according to my DNA or whatever. It's it, it, nonsense. And I also object to some people, foolish people, who go down the Zionist road yeah. and talk about fake Jews from, oh. uh, from the Khazarian and bullshit like that. Yes. I, I think we're against, a, we're against a rotten system in Israel. We don't need to um, drink in the waters of this racism, do we? Okay. Please, your, your views on that, Jackie. Yeah, I mean, I've identified as being Jewish uh, ever since my mother told me that I was Jewish. And my mother died when I was 11 years old. And these people who say, oh, she only decided she was Jewish three years ago when this happened. Well, you obviously haven't looked at the Guardian interviews. Uh, that were done about my book and you haven't talked to my Jewish friends and you haven't talked to my Jewish partner either and they would all tell you something different but how do I don't need to excuse myself to these people who are they who are these people they're basically racist anyway I don't have to give any excuses to these people because it's their disgusting corrupt ideology that is racist not mine I'm a socialist Grand. One more thing. It's getting a bit, well, a few more things, but it's getting a bit crazy. Um, excuse me. Whom the gods would destroy, they first drive mad. And now I, I told you a really fine Scottish uh, anti-racist Labour councillor was dragged over the coals in Fife a little while ago. But now an equally fine uh, trade union activist and uh, Scottish Labour Party member, a candidate, um, has been attacked because she said a couple of years ago, as I think I've said it. I think a lot of people have said it in a, in a relaxed way. Um, Israel's like an abused kid that in turn becomes an abuser. Now, I would challenge that um, because I don't think accurate. I don't think Israel was ever abused. I think European Jews were massacred, but I don't think Israel was ever abused at all. But you get the point. Yeah, it's yeah. humane. Yeah. It's not remotely anti-Semitic or anti-disabled people sure. or anti-abused uh, people. Yeah, yeah. And she's been, she's been done for this? Yeah. Your comments, Jackie? Well, first of all, I think that's just how ridiculous it's getting. Because actually what that opens up and shows really clearly is that this is not about racism. This is about criticism of Israel. This is about criticism of Israel. And can I just give you a few of those really dry figures? 2018, 56 children, Palestinian children, were killed and 2,700 injured by the state forces of Israel. That's what we're talking about. And that is just what Reuters reported. 
that will be an underestimate. Now, if that isn't child abuse, I don't know what is. And I don't know any regime which would get away with it. And what I think is disgusting is that we have representatives in our Labour Party who are not just silent about it, they defend it. How have we got to this point where we defend a regime that injures thousands of children, imprisons thousands of children? Somebody very close to me, I'm not going to give you their name, is actually in Palestine at the moment. And he says one of the most disturbing things he's finding is talking to Palestinian children and the stories they're telling about the casual abuse, the casual abuse meted out to them by, by the settlers and by the army. Now, if we're not allowed to point to this, because people will say, well, why does that matter? You know, I mean, it's, it's a long way away and it's all very difficult and all we want to do is win. Can I just say, as socialists, once you compromise your moral stance, it doesn't just stop here. And we've seen that in the way that this is being used to cleanse good socialists everywhere. Jackie, um, we've got... Uh... I mean, a, a monstrous caricature of an individual running the Conservative Party who might very well be uh, Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, Rhys Mogg insulting the largely brown and black-skinned people in, in uh, Grenfell as being not very bright and bringing it upon themselves compared to titans like him. We've got an election coming up and a lot of people say, look, you're talking about the Labour Party. It's really pretty, yeah, it's pretty bad what's happened to you and to other people. So we don't want these monsters in the Conservative Party flogging off the health service to Trump and his pals. So come on, bite your tongue. Why are we talking about it? Listen, I have no doubt that a Labour government is essential at this point. But we've been here before. I remember people saying this about Blair. Just bite your tongue and vote for Blair. And actually where that led us was one of the most bloody wars of modern times and something that the Labour Party has never gotten over. And this is where it leads to. Now we can do both. We can both vote for the Labour Party and also point out where it's failing us. And can I just add here, I, I, I just want to add this. I want to talk for a moment about anti-black racism because this year saw the smallest, the, the fewest, the least amount of black um, uh, candidates for winnable seats in the last 20 years. During this session, not one black person from the Bernie Grant leadership program was chosen to become a candidate for Westminster. And what we actually have, and this is important, and this is partly why it's important, that all this focus on one set of people has actually erased conversation about minorities who are actually marginalized and excluded from power. And that, if you don't think that's important, well, I can give you some other reasons why what we're talking about is really important. So I think what we have to do is, we have to vote uh, Labour, we have to get rid of the Tories, and you cannot vote Liberal Democrat at this point. I mean, that would just be an extraordinary I mean, this is, this is a woman who has already said that she wouldn't deal with the Labour Party. So basically a vote for her is a vote for the Tories. We have to do that and then we have to fight for the soul and the heart of the Labour Party. I agree. A party is a voluntary organisation of people. You're pulling together. I'll be supporting them from the outside. Um, very much wanting them to win and urging people in England certainly to vote for them. Uh -huh. um, I'd be promoting 
Corbyn's uh, political programme is far and away the best one in the whole UK. Yeah. But tactically, I'll probably be voting SNP, even though it's moving rightwards as part of uh, an, an anti-Tory bloc. So I'll hold my nose and vote SNP, yeah? yeah I can understand that. Come back, come back to something else. Um, you were kicked out of the Labour Party. Margaret Hodge is welcomed <laughs> into it. Um, come on. Um, this is a very dark scene. Hodge, Hodge has a record that I wouldn't, if she, if she moved in next door, but she's far too grand to do, we'd have a petition to get her kicked out of the neighbourhood. She's absolutely disgusting human being, attacked the victims of child abuse uh, when they began to speak up. Um, Jackie, come on, you were kicked out. You're an anti-racist your whole life. You're a Labour Party activist for a very long time. Why is millionaire... Uh, abu attacker of the child abuse victims, why is she still allowed in? And she called, she called Jeremy Corbyn a fucking anti-Semite in Parliament. It's because um, of power, isn't it? Margaret Hodge represents those inside and outside of the Labour Party who've got power, and her power is very obvious. Her power is the power to get on all our media anytime she wants to, and it's, uh, her power is reflected within the newspapers and within the structures of the Labour Party and the fact that she can abuse the leader and nothing happens to her. Now that is power. And as soon as that happened, well, she was given carte blanche, Margaret Hodge can now say what the fuck she likes. Hey, watch your language, yeah? Um, <laughs> uh... I was matching her language. <laughs> no, sometimes it's the right word. Yes. Um, sometimes it's the right word. Uh, Tony Greenstein got expelled as well, um, initially for anti-Semitism and then for something else. God knows, we can't remember. He, did an, he wrote a long article once, uh, or a short article with a lot of appendices, and he talked about two Republican uh, advisors, sort of Dominic Cummings types, they're both Jewish actually, but they advise extreme right-wing, sometimes anti-Semitic governments, and they were advising Orban in Hungary how to smash the opposition, how you identify an enemy, immigrants, God knows who it is, in order to get elected. And they said the ideal enemy or the ideal opponent is somebody that you can punch, but they cannot punch back. Yeah. You can keep on punching them, but yeah. the act of punching back simply makes things worse for them. So it's the opposite of the Greek myth. I forget who it was, but every time he was thrown to the ground, he stood up stronger. Every time we get punched and we punch back, it's living proof that you're part of the problem. What's your comments on that? Yeah, I mean, that's totally, that's totally the bottom line. It might have been different. It could have played out in a different way. But what it would have needed, and, and I think we have to examine ourselves here, it would have needed solidarity on the part of the left. And I'm afraid when you've got organizations like the AWL, who are actually a Zionist organization, and as far as I'm concerned, they are scabs. They're yeah, not socialists. I agree. When you have got control of the power on the left by union bureaucrats, for whom they are the brokers of power and so want to deal with the power uh, and the powerful. When you've got enough of those, when you've got the structures, the ossified structures of the Labour Party, and actually the, in, the difficulty in changing those structures, when you have that, then it's, it's, it, it's very difficult to actually make those changes. There's only one way to change it, and that was through solidarity. And of course, now what we have is a leadership where, you know, what, what, what it appears to be is that they have totally um, become complicit with this. And if you ask me, most of the MPs, most of the people mouthing this nonsense know it's nonsense. They know Corbyn isn't a racist. Just like Burko said, they know he's, you know, they know this is absolute nonsense. But it's a great tool, particularly if you then have that fault line going through the leadership, which started right at the beginning, where they, where, where they became complicit with this. 
Well, um, I think we should always start off a conversation, and I think all too often people get it wrong, um, that we don't need our MPs to have confidence in us. They've got a long, with a few exceptions, they've got a long uphill climb to get our confidence because their reputations are very much an all-time low. Um, Jackie, how have you dealt with it personally? Has it gutted you? Um, and uh, what advice do you have for people also in the crosshairs of these creatures? Um, how, what advice do you have for people in the crosshairs? What should they do? From your experience, because it goes now yeah. years back, yeah? I mean, you know, it's made me a very different person. Um, it's made me see, and I, I'm joining here with the number of, you know, I get communicated a lot, in particular with black people. It's made me understand racism in a very different way. It's made me see the racism that also exists against black people, the structural racism against black people on left organizations. And I think that has been quite a shock for me to see just how easily um, organizations like the Labour Party and the trades unions have made black people invisible, even though they know that we are actually excluded from power. But, you know, we're talking about power. It has been really tough. Uh, you know, I think the advice I'd give to anybody is find people you can talk to and find ways of not being silenced. Well, that's for me. So, you know, I, there's the film, The Witch Hunt. There's um, the play, The Lynching. I'm just about to start another play and I'm just about to write a book about what's happened to me in the last three years. And it's a bit like you were talking about not being in the Labour Party. I mean, the reason why I can speak this really, the reason why I can be free to say things on my Facebook page is that I'm not in the Labour Party now. And but, what, but surely your political life ended when you left the Labour Party. <laughs> Come on, I mean, a lot of people forget the Labour Party is a party. Yeah, no, actually, I have been freed to speak up and to, and to actually say things. And that's why I'm able to talk to you now. If I was in the Labour Party, I wouldn't be able to speak to you. Uh, I'd have to pretend that- You'd be looking over your shoulder all the time. Yeah, I'd be looking over my shoulder all the time. And we know that that is what's happening. That's the witch hunt that's going on in the Labour Party. I am free of it. And that's no way to live. Most no. people who join the Tory party do so to feather their own nests or, yeah. to, or to injure certain people, yeah. like the mass of the working class, not minorities and so on. Most people who join the Labour Party, well, it used to be very true, I don't know anymore, um, but they do it to make the world a better place. Yeah. They do so for good reasons. I may disagree with them about X, Y and Z, but that's not the issue. They want a better world. Yes. And now they've been silenced and they've been terrorised. Um, I, I spoke to somebody from a Labour Party branch in Edinburgh recently and she said, yeah, steer fo steer. <laughs> fear stalks the land, yeah? It's I mean, people are afraid. And that They're is afraid. the untold story of what's going on. It's a reign of terror in the Labour Party against the left. This makes what happened to the militant look like look like a little fairy story. There has never been such a persecution of the left, of anti-Zionist Jews, of black people. There has never been such persecution in the Labour Party before. It, this is a historical moment. That's why I'm going to write about it. But can I just slightly disagree with you? I mean, obviously it's a McCarthy attack, McCarthyism. It's to silence and frighten people. But you know, in Colombia or Palestine, if you stand up to the authorities, they kill you, they shoot you, they pull out your fingernails, they massacre your friends and family. Yeah. Uh, I mean, being kicked out of the Labour Party is not in the same level of magnitude. People can are I, being frightened, you're right, but they shouldn't be. Can they I just say be. to you that that's not just what happens, and that's what you've got to remember. Because what happens to you is then a process of vilification. And I have to tell you, I have managed in the last year to persuade half a dozen people not to commit suicide. There are people who've lost their jobs. 
There are people whose children have been spat at in the street and threatened. So we're not just talking about losing, uh, you know, an opportunity to be a councillor or an MP or go to your local party meeting. I mean, if anyone's been to one, I have to say it's great that I don't have to go to any um, anymore. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the vilification that happens to you. Because to be accused of anti-Semitism, which is racism, as my solicitor said to me, there's only one thing worse, and that's being accused of being a rapist or a murderer. But Jackie, come on. Look, somebody, when I was on trial for racism, I was still, for anti-Semitism, I was still working. And it really was wonderful when a really nice Chinese woman, a colleague, I told her I was going up to court quite shortly to be done for racism. And it was lovely because she laughed out loud and walked down the corridor and said, Mick's on trial for racism. It was just ridiculous. And I suspect that's true for you in spades. That, you know, people like us have a long his a long record um, and, and who is going to believe it? Who is going to round on you and attack you? You don't need them. I mean, it'll be the enemy. It won't be friends who'll turn on you, is it? And you're absolutely right, but not everybody is tough enough to just do that, Mick. I think that's the problem. And one of the reasons that I am writing is that what I know is in 10 years time, in 20 years time, when we have the Secret Service's files opened. Yeah. I am going to be the only person who has made a creative response to what is going on. And we need to start actually making record of what actually happened so that other generations can learn from us. Because what we have seen now, I have absolutely no doubt, is the operation of what they call the dark state. And I think the whole consequences of this has yet to be seen and is going to be played out after the result of the uh, general election. It will play itself out big. No, point taken. Final, uh, not final point, but another point, just on this last question on this theme, Tony Benn said that uh, he had to get out of parliament to get involved in politics. So uh, some advice to people if they are concerned about being driven out of the Labour Party. Obviously, they don't want to be. They've made an investment to invest in a party for a, yeah. a year or a decade, yeah. and then to think it's turning to ashes is a horrible, horrible feeling. I've had it myself. Um, but what would your final advice be to people who are being victimised inside the Labour Party? Hang on in there, or just say, hey, you know, the I think outside. you have to hang on in there. And that's hard for me to say. I mean, I, I have to say I've actually told people who said, I want to kill myself, I've said, leave the party, you know, because it's not worth it. But if you can, you hang on in there and you fight and you vote the right way and you talk to people about what's going on and that's your role. If you can't, for whatever reason, stay in there, you don't have to be in a party political group to be political. I spent 20 years outside of 15 years outside of party politics and I was very political so there's lots of ways that you can be political it doesn't have to be within the party system well I'm a homeless socialist myself so I, I, I echo echo those words um, what about the idea that the people have talked we've talked about it before Jackie the people who are accusing you and me and others of, of being racists often have a very dark and ugly racism um, in their own makeup. Um, but what about the idea that uh, we're accused of being racist for not saying the Israeli government made a mistake, uh, but there's something wrong with the Zionist ideology as a whole, that it is racist. What about the idea that, because I subscribe to it very strongly, I'm interested in your opinion, Zionism in itself is a racist anti-Semitic creed because it shares with the naked right-wing anti-Semites the idea that all Jews should quit Europe, get the hell out. And I oppose that completely. Your thoughts? It's obvious that Zionism is a racist ideology. And it's also obvious, um, if you look at the history and you look at what's happening now, that Zionism has only one way to go. 
it has to go and keep on getting more and more right wing and apartheid has to be even deeper entrenched. And I saw a thing today coming out and I can't remember who it was from, but it was in Haaretz. And it was basically saying, you know, you can't be an Israeli citizen unless you're Jewish. And that's what we now have. We have the, the bottom line is coming out. Is that, I mean, that would be like saying, you know, you can't be an, a citizen of England unless you're a Christian. I mean... Small, small correction, Jackie, I hope you don't mind me being, I'm not being pedantic, but um, there was a million Palestinian citizens of Israel. Uh, the thing is, though, fat lot of good it does them, because citizenship is secondary to something, a bizarre Israeli thing called nationality. For sure. Um, yeah, but could you I talk about that for a sec? What I was telling you was what, and I can't remember the name of whoever was saying it, it was a politician who was saying it today, is that in his opinion, you cannot be Israeli unless you're Jewish. Hey. Now, that is blatantly racist. Of course. By the, way, there's a, by the way, there's a thing on the, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Israeli website, this is, and there's a section on it called How to Obtain Israeli Citizenship, which is very like how to get a unicorn as a pet from the local <laughs> pet shop, because Israeli citizenship is banned in Israel. Sorry, Israeli nationality, I do apologise. Yeah. There's, there's a thing on the website saying how to get Israeli nationality. People have been to the Israeli Supreme Court time after time to ask for Israeli nationality, and they have been told time after time it's not allowed. Yeah. If we allow Israeli nationality, it's the end of the Zionist state. Yes. Um, because this is not a state for a million Palestinians living here as, with citizenship. It's yeah. a state for Jews from Glasgow or Vladivostok or wherever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Zionism is essentially a racist ideology. It only has one way to go. And as far as I'm concerned, Israel should be a state of and for its citizens. And there is only one solution, and that is one state. Two state solutions not going to work. In my opinion, it's one state that we should be heading for. Jackie, you started off by saying people in the crosshairs are there because they're anti-racist, they're pro-Corbyn, and, and they support freedom for the Palestinian people. Talked about a lot. But, you know, the situation in Palestine is bloody and brutal and grim. Um, it's officially an apartheid state, given the nation state. Massacres. Is that you or me? It was me. Did you play in a xylophone there? No, no. Um, I'm afraid it comes through on my computer and it's probably going to happen Sorry about again. Sorry. Um, what was I talking about? Um, massacres. Oh, that's like your... That's like your... Uh, your phone going off in church. I know, um, it's not my phone. It comes through on my computer. That's all oh, right. Um, terrible situation in Palestine. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons for this unholy alliance of the labor right, Tories in the mass media, and the pro Israel gang uh, with reins running back to the Israeli embassy is the issue of Palestine. Uh, they couldn't stand the idea of a pro Palestine uh, leader of the fifth or sixth biggest economy in the world with nuclear weapons and so on, and being Palestinian. What can we do effectively to give succor and support to the people of Palestine? We don't just want to emote. We don't just want to bear witness as they go down. We want to do something to help them. Jackie, what do you think? We can do all sorts of things. We can support BDS. We can talk. I actually think one of the most effective things to do is to talk to people whenever you can, is to explain the situation. Because most people, or a lot of people, don't understand what's going on there. And the story they get is from our media, who are highly biased. So I think you talk to people, you go, yeah, you go on marches, you lobby, you lobby, you write to your MPs, and you, you write to our, the leaders, and you say, I don't want this. And this is, this is what you've got to do. And you use all of those methods that you can. Well, let's end on a high note. Um, this is my favorite uh, graph behind me. The BBC runs an annual uh, opinion poll around the world. It's quite valid in its findings, um, which, you know, countries are ranked in terms of what people think of them. Yeah. And uh, undeservedly, Canada and uh, Germany are up at the top. But yeah. leave that aside. 
Israel's always near the bottom. It yeah. never gets out of the bottom four. It's in the same league as Pakistan, North Korea, and other countries which get a very, very hostile press for obvious reasons. Yeah. Israel, with all its advocates, never gets out of the bottom, and sometimes it's the very bottom. Yeah. So public opinion's with us, Jackie. Yeah? Absolutely. Because people see what's happening, and when people can see what's happening, when they can see what's happening in Gaza, when they saw those bombs, when they heard what Regev, that that apologist for murder was saying. There's only one way that you can look at it when you see 2,700 children injured in one year, 56 killed. It's slam dunk. Israel deserves to be in the bottom pile of countries. As Ronnie Casrell said, one of the heroes of the struggle in South Africa, um, and a great advocate of Palestine, we. Israel's a polecat state, just as they worked to make South Africa a polecat state yeah. during that struggle. Jackie, your final remarks. Look, there's a, a US folk song, What Side Are You On? Sorry. I know the song very well, but I'm not going to sing it. What side are you on? Ah. Uh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. What side, what side are you on? In any struggle, you've got theory, you've got people who read books, there's an intellectual priesthood, there's all sorts of things. But in a struggle, when someone's being assaulted, um, or someone's been victimized or whatever, you must take sides. Yes. Sometimes you don't have a dog in the fight. To be honest with you, a lot of people feel that about Brexit now. Yeah. But yeah. usually there's an issue at stake and you have to take sides. And if you don't take sides, it diminishes yourself. Yeah. We have, how, how do we get this message over to people that they are the people we have been waiting for? Nobody else is going to do it. There is no other way of doing it except the hard work way. Talking, talking, communication, getting out of that sort of box of the TV, you know, doing it through film, doing it through song, doing it through protest, doing it through dance, and doing it by actually communicating with people, their power in solidarity to change the world. Jackie, the people who are leading this McCarthy witch hunt lynching are going to be defeated one day or the other. The wave will reach a peak and it will break. To change the metaphor, they will break their teeth on people who Good. stand their ground and will not be intimidated. Good. You're certainly one of those who has not been intimidated. You're an inspiration, Jackie, and thanks very much for joining being part of the interview this week. The interview will be available in a couple of minutes after we finish. Um, let's uh, struggle. It's the time we're alive. We've no choice but to fight. Thanks very much, Jackie Walker. Thank you. That was Jackie Walker um, from London. She's going to China quite soon. Um, and uh, she'll be back to join the struggle here before too long. Friends, uh, it's getting worse. Uh, the closer Jeremy Corbyn gets to number 10, and we think there's a very good chance he can still get there, uh, the worse the anti-Semitic, uh, the weaponization of anti-Semitism, the attacks on Corbyn are going to be IRA supporter, uh, anti-Semite, God knows what they're going to drag up. Um, and Palestine is an issue related to that because the Israeli embassy mob are very much the spear point of the attack on the Labour Party left. I'm not in the Labour Party, but we have to support that Labour Party Corbynite left and the values that they have been espousing for a very long time. Um, friends, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, we'll be back next week with another voice that we think contributes to the discussion around Palestine solidarity and freedom for the people of Palestine. Thank you for viewing and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of Sunday. Thank you.